Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm not actually in the game at the moment. I just want to have a quick chat about mods. I get asked frequently, uh, where are the mods that you're using? Um, and I've been going to the Farming Simulator website and I go to the mod section on their website and download the mods and install them. I didn't actually realise because I've not paid proper attention to this, so I'm assuming that maybe some other people may not have realised this either. If you click on mods in your first main menu here, click there, and you've got all of these mods. You can actually download them and update them. It will show you here, if you go into this bit, I've just recently updated all of mine using this section, which I had no idea was here. This is so cool. So you've got them all here and then you click on downloads and it'll actually show you what you're in the middle of downloading. Uh, so latest, if we click on these, we've got Cobra Park Farm. We've got a another front mounted um, sort of cultivator slash packer for uh, working in fields. We've got the concrete rolls pack here. These concrete rolls can be used to level and pack the soil. They are used in game to remove weeds in the field in the first growing stage like the weeders. So they work the same as the weeders um, but they're slightly different in if in real life if you're caring for grassland you would use rollers on them um, early in the spring to just compact the field a bit uh, sort of squash down any stones and so on to make mowing and working the field later in the year a lot easier. Um, Prior to going over them with the rollers, we go over them with what's called a chain harrow. And it's basically just a series of chains all linked together with little tiny spikes that go through and they rip up all the dead grass and help to sort of free it up. And it can help, it helps to promote uh, good fresh growth. And then you go over afterwards and you use the rollers to squash down any stones, clods, anything like that that's been ripped up. Um, so it's kind of like that, only you could use them on crops and grass. So anyway, I did install those. And I, I just wanted to show you because look, you got all of these different things and you can install them straight from here. So this is absolutely fantastic. This is where you can get them so you can do it in game. You don't have to go to their website like I've been doing. I had no idea. I genuinely had no idea. It's all in the categories here. You've got latest, you've got, well, it, yeah, they're all here. Okay, so that is where you get the mod section. I will meet you in game, we've got a few things that I'd like to get done today. Right, I'm just getting the pallet forks on so that we can fill up the seed drill over there and then we're going to set that one drilling. We've got our three fields back here at the farm that we want to drill. Uh, my weekly question this week is quite a simple question really and if we just take a quick look here, field one, we've got around about half of the discount that will be available on the field so so far we're up to about half. Do you want me to use some of my newfound wealth to buy the field immediately or do you think I should do a few more jobs up here to get the maximum discount and then buy it? So that's all, that's all I'm asking is should I buy it immediately first thing at the beginning of next week's episodes or do I wait until we've done a few more jobs so that we can get a little bit more discount on it? I think we could actually save ourselves another $30,000 as well as earn the money for doing the jobs on there. So we, we could stand again a, a nice tidy sum out of it. Um, there should be a card come up here and hopefully it will actually come up this time. Yes, I did forget to put yesterday's card up to start with, but I did correct that fairly soon afterwards. Thank you to everyone for pointing that out to me. Um, and head into the comment section, tell us why you're voting for what you're voting for. Oop, I didn't actually want to do that. I wanted to come out of cab view so that I can just take a quick look at the pallet forks. We'll leave the, um, the fertilizer spinner on the back to act as a counterweight. That's going to work out quite nicely for us. So we'll just get that one on there. And turn. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to keep this one. I know this one's on higher, but we don't use it a lot. And it's got the care wheels on it, so the, the row crop tires. So that, that's actually going to work out quite nicely. Um, so if I just stop here a second, I want to hop into the other tractor. And there we go. Start that one up. And I'll open the covers on that one. Now, um, I was going to... I was having a look at this. We've just about run out of seed and fertilizer. Um, and I don't know if anybody's watched my recent time-lapse episode, the, the longer one I did for Christmas. Partway through that one, what I did was I installed a new system here at the farm for loading seed and fertilizer. What I've got is I've got a conveyor belt set up on each bay over there and one on this bay here and I go and get the fertilizer in a seed and I load it straight into a trailer at the um, over at the shop 
And I bring it over here in a trailer, I just tip it out on the floor, and then whenever I need fertilizer or seed, I can just drive straight underneath the conveyor belt with whatever machine it is and load it up. So it's not really worth a question, I don't think. Um, so we'll just have that as today's topic of discussion in the comments section. Would you like me to... Oh, we've actually used up all of our um, seed now. Let's just see how much we've got. We are going to need seed. Yeah, we're going to need seed soon. Um, I don't know how soon, but we will need it soon. I'll... I'll stick a bit of fertilizer. No, I won't put fertilizer in there. I might need it on this fertilizer spreader. So we'll leave that for a minute. We'll only put it in if we absolutely need it. So let's just set that one down. Switch him off. And we'll take this one out and start it working in the field. So yeah, in the comment section, just have a little chat about whether you think I should have a setup the same as what I've got on the time lapse series. Um, so that I'm... Uh, bringing it over in a trailer and using conveyor belts to load or do you think I should just bring back some pallets on a trailer um, sort of the more conventional way and uh, load them and work them like that um, just just have a chat in the comment section we'll sort of see what people want me to do and then I'll go with that um, like I said I don't really think it's worth a full question oh no 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 no, no. don't start planting I need to put the right crop on today um, I was thinking we're going to put everything the same and I'm hoping this week that I will actually get... Right, let me just see what we've got. I think we've got some wheat stored. Uh, so whether I want to go for the same again. I think we will. I think we're going to do three fields of wheat this time. So we'll, yeah, stick with wheat. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to get the, um, the episode done. It's, it's going to be like a bit of a bonus episode. I don't know how long it's going to take. It, it's probably going to be fairly short someone sent me a map that is all set up to do a proper test on yields and profit and everything so that we can see how much money we can make on the different crops um i have seen some results from this previously um so it's it's nice that someone has sent me this thing so that i can run my own comparisons um and i was actually quite surprised having read up on it a bit i don't know why the hide help stopped so soon but we'll manually override that and go on and just finish that bit of field um i am actually just going to do a couple passes on the end here and then we'll set it working up and down the field um yeah so i, I was kind of surprised and I, I will tell you now because um I don't, I don't think it's sort of uh, much of a secret. It's quite easy to go and look the information up. But we, we, we are going to be running our own test just to kind of confirm this. They're all about the same. The different crops do sort of tend to be the same. And I think maybe corn just fractionally pulls out into the lead just a tiny bit. Um, but, I mean, it's so little in it that it, it, it's, it's not really worth worrying about. Um... I'm not sure where the root crops come into it, but obviously the root crops need a lot more expensive specialist equipment to be able to harvest. Um, but beans, uh, canola, sunflowers, and all of that, they do generally have about the same amount, all of them, which it did quite surprise me, I've got to be honest. It did surprise me a bit. Um, but the thing that does pull, if you have wheat and barley, the, it, they do actually pull out into the lead. But that's only if you gather up all the straw and sell it. If you don't gather the straw and sell it, they actually come out marginally lower than the others. Uh, but if you gather up the straw and you sell it, that extra little bit is not a huge amount, but it's just enough to push them up into the lead. So wheat and barley, uh, depending on the prices you get on the day, one or the other one of them is the, going to be the one that will take the lead. Which, I've got to be honest, that did surprise me quite a bit. But anyway... Uh, we will confirm that in our own series of experiments that we will do with a map that somebody has sent me. Um, but I'll talk about that in the episode. And that, that's not going to be a regular episode. That is just going to be a bit, bit of bonus footage um, that I do when I've got time. I've, uh, simply that is just when I can find the time to do it. Um, I've no, no idea when that might be. So, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be this week. But if it's not, then you may have to wait a few weeks. Um, we're going to get this one going today and then i'm kind of i'm kind of not in the mood for just sitting around and watching the seed drill because we have seen the seed drill a few times in the past we know what this one is like uh we've got our brand new tractor over there but we don't really have anything to pull with it um but never fear i will be asking a question next week regarding what new machinery we're going to get put onto that tractor um 
I've been having a think because obviously we lease everything here in Goldcrest Valley apart from these two tractors that we've bought and I was saying I'd like to buy a why are you stopping so soon there's no need for it I hope it's not going to be doing I got a feeling that we're just yeah we're doomed to have this one stop early forever I don't know why anyway let's let's just do that little bit there there we go lift that one up back round and I'll set him just going up and down across the field all by his lonesome there right that one can carry on and seed that field we'll plant that one with wheat hopefully it won't leave great big strips at the bottom and the top we'll see when we come back and have another look um so yeah we've got the the huge tractor down here but we haven't really got anything to put on it i have been informed that i shouldn't do too much road work with it because it can wear through the tracks very quickly and you've got a fair you've got a very valid point there so we need to avoid doing too much excessive road work with that tractor so if you're like dragging corn along a road and so on, we need to use our smaller tractor, not this one, because it does wear the tracks quite quick. And those are very expensive to replace, a bit like um, Caterpillar tracks on a mini digger or any kind of excavator, which I have been involved with replacing. And yes, it's time consuming and expensive to replace them. So I do have a few suggestions of what we might be getting, uh, but that'll be that's for next week. In the meantime, oh, I want to go this way because I want to get my truck. Um, I'm in the mood for doing a bit of combining today, and there are a few fields around that we could do some combining on. I'm not going to go up to field one or field six because neither of those two are actually ready for harvesting. Um, oh, actually, field six is ready to harvest. What is that? Uh, that's wheat. Ah, ideal. Okay, so we're going to go up to field six because I was actually thinking that we would harvest some of these small fields here because those two are owned by the same person. Uh, field 21 and field 17 field 18 is owned by someone else however it would be nice because i feel that those three and field 10 are nice fields that we could pick up because they're very small they're very cheap same as field 19 you know what I, actually well it depends what field 19 is i'm not going to be doing any root harvesting today i'm not in the mood for that uh soybeans okay we can go and do some soybeans we'll do some soybeans first and we'll harvest that one and then after we've done that and oop Right, turn the radio off again, because we cannot have the radio on Let's Plays. Just in case anybody's wondering, that's why I never, ever have the radio on Let's Plays, because it does bring up copyright strikes. Um, the music is okay for you to listen to privately in the game, but it's not okay to put on a YouTube channel. Um, I actually meant to press that button to put the time up to five times speed, because I just realised that I've actually slowed it down. And, right, let's go here. Time for mission. So the very feed 18 foot on the TC590 and are offering us 6,000. Alex Young. There's only 46,000 to buy the field in the first place. So um, I figure if we do a few jobs on some of these smaller fields, um, it'll make it a little bit cheaper when we come to buy them and also it'll give us a little bit of extra money to play with, which is never a bad thing. So I'm going to do this one from InCab. I'm not using GPS. I am not going to... Um, do anything else like that i'm going to do this one all from in the cab uh, i need to unfold the combine first which i'm going to do from out of cab just so you can see that i have actually unfolded it there we go right now i'm going to do it all from in cab and if i go like that and then i switch to the front header then we can pick it up on the headlands so we'll come up through here and right i want to make sure that i get the header at the right place we come up through here um, and then when I get to the top, I'm going to take a strip. Oh, I'm actually missing a little bit down there. You just come out a bit. Just seen it creeping up past the header there. Um, it's so difficult to judge because obviously when you when you're actually driving a combine, your head is a lot further forward than this. Um, because here you, you're sort of sat right at the back of the seat, and you wouldn't be quite this far back in real life. So it is actually more difficult doing this in cab um, like this than it is to do it in real life. Uh, just in case anybody is actually wondering about that. You sat. Obviously, your head is slightly further forward. And I don't like having the steering wheel up like that either. When I um, drive most machines, the adjustable steering wheel, I pull it right back so it's low down in my lap. And then I've got a good view over the top of it. I know some people like to have it far away, have their arm extended more. I don't... That's not a comfortable position for me to drive in. I like to... I like to sit and I put the steering wheel low down and bring it right back on my lap. So it's, it's sort of almost on top of my knees just about um, especially with driving the combine 
Uh, I've got just enough room to move my knees up and down for um, operating the pedals when I need to. Although, unless you're in really steep ground and you need to savagely stamp on the brakes, um, generally when you're actually operating a combine, you don't need the pedals at all. It, you do everything on the hydrostatic um, lever that's on the side there. See that lever right there that's got all those buttons on it? That's the one that you hold. You hold on to that one and that sort of does all of the operating of the combine and you don't really need to worry about the rest of it because all you do is if you want to slow down you just pull that one back and the, the drive slows, slows down and the combine itself is very good at braking itself um, so sort of slowing itself down when you're uh, driving in a circle uh, if, you, if you're going down the hill you just slow it down a bit and it holds itself back rather than allowing itself to run on so it's very good at doing that or at least the one that I drove I've only ever driven one combine so um, Obviously, others might be considerably different to that. However, uh, in my own personal experience, that is what they've been like. It's been absolutely fantastic. So you don't need to worry about the pedals. Don't need to worry about them at all. I would never drove a combine that had any GPS tracking or um, a, a auto guide on the header. And I mentioned a long time ago, I think, in a video, I did see a combine being trialed that had a camera set up a laser guided system and I know a lot of combines have it now and it's it's been perfected a lot more so it's, it's a lot more efficient um, that the whole system works better and basically they've got cameras on either side of the header and that look down and see the crop and they guide the combine up and down so once you've turned at the headland and you've gone into the crop that thing will guide it down through keeping the header full now because it was in quite early stages of development when I first seen it more than a decade ago um, it wasn't actually very good. Uh, it did, it did, it, it worked. Don't get me wrong, it definitely worked. Um, but it wasn't able to keep the header extremely full. It had quite a high tolerance. Um, so, it, you know, it quite, it had to have quite a big allowance. And you had uh, 6 to 12 inches of the header out on one side that didn't have crop in it. And when you were driving the combine, um, and obviously you're driving it yourself, you wouldn't have that much. You'd have one or two in, well, I would have one or two inches on the side of the header that was free, that uh, didn't have crop in, um, and I would keep it like that. Because if I tried to keep it any tighter than that, I would sometimes miss little bits, and you'd just have little bits of grain left standing in the field, and that's not the way to behave. You, you can't do things like that. Um, the, uh, the guy that drove the other combine, he was a very experienced driver. He'd been driving them for a very long time. And he would run down and he would have literally millimetres to spare as he went right across the field. And he would do that all the time. We're going around curves, whatever. He he was a fantastic operator um, and had done it for many, many years. And I couldn't quite I, did, I couldn't quite match that. I did sometimes try, but then I'd end up leaving little bits. And I'd get told off by the farm manager for um, leaving bits um, and, and getting ahead of myself. He kept telling me not to, not to try and run before I could walk. Um, so I'd have to leave a slightly bigger gap on the header on the combine. Um, anyway, I'm going to finish this field a minute, and I'll get back to you just as I'm almost ready to complete it, so you can see the final bit. And then we will go and find another field to combine. We'll probably go up to field six, actually, because uh, that is the one, one of the ones that we want to get reduced, uh, rather than going to one of the other smaller ones. Although I'm not sure. We are... I don't know if we've got time to go up to field six now. We might just go for one of the other little ones and see if we've got a different crop that we can harvest that we haven't seen for a while. Not taking very long at all to do this one, actually. Um, I started going around in circles rather than uh, turning and going up and down. And I'm getting the hang of eyeing it up so that it gets. Uh, we have a full header on each pass of the field. That is the important part, is to try and keep the header full, but obviously not... Um, wasting any you don't want to leave any behind so like I said that's what I used to get told off for all the time was um, trying to get too greedy getting ahead of myself because I wasn't that experienced a driver and leaving little bits in the field as nothing upsets them more um, it, it, he would far rather I took an extra hour to work the field than uh, leave little bits behind because an extra hour's wage compared to I mean I suppose actually an extra hour's wage compared to the price of the grain is not a huge amount but it could make a difference anyway uh, six, seven and a half thousand. Yeah, seven and a half thousand. Added onto our total. That takes that one down to 46,000 to buy. I mean, even if we get the full reduction, it's going to be about 38, 39,000. Because you get 20% reduction. That's not too bad. Uh, 
we're not going to do that today. I'm going to go and find a bit more combining to do. I'm, like I said, I'm in the mood for combining today. And don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow yet. Um, I'm thinking that we'll try and find a few other jobs to do. We're, obviously, our um, uh, planting is going to continue unabated. And we do need to... Well, we're going to need to get a little bit more seed, aren't we? Uh, it's going to need be something we're going to need to do soon-ish. Uh, not yet, though. Oop. I'm going way too fast. I'm going to get pulled over like this. Okay, let's let's slow down a little bit. If I go around the back roads, hopefully I can avoid any cops with speed guns. There's nothing worse than a cop pointing a speed gun at you. It doesn't matter if you're already underneath the speed limit when a police officer is pointing his speed camera at you. Um, you instinctively tap the brakes. You see you see a police officer with a camera and you tap your brakes. It doesn't matter what speed you're doing, you still slow down. Um, it, uh, unless it's just me. It might, it might just be me. I might um, regularly lead a, a life of crime and so I, I regularly do that. Um, I'm not one of those people that hate to see police officers, by the way. I love to see the police around. Um, it's, you know, I feel it's a lot safer with them around than it's with them not around. Um, I know that uh, it can be it can be a bit of a, a sensitive subject sometimes, but I would still rather see them. I would always rather see them. And oh no, I want to press that button. I'll get it eventually. I, I'm tapping different buttons here. Um, now then, we want to unfold everything. So we'll unfold the harvester, and then we'll go and we'll unfold the front. And yes, I haven't gone up to field six. I know I said that I would go up to field six and do that one next. Um, but I fancy doing something a little bit different. And this field is a lot smaller. So we may go up to field 6 tomorrow and have a go with that. Uh, not quite sure yet. Uh, oh, I want to go back to the actual combine. Then start up. That'll lower down. Have I actually done any corn harvesting on this series yet? I know I've done some uh, as contract work in uh, the time lapse series. But I'm not actually sure if I've done it on this one. Um, oh, I missed a bit there. I think I did. I think I did a field. We definitely haven't done any for ourselves because the corn that we grew, we harvested it as silage and sold it up there. Oh, and that brings me to the other thing that I was thinking about uh, the other day was we've got... Um, we've, we own two tractors now. And I'd like to own a combine because, you know, basically I'm, I'm sort of basing this map on the experience I had working for someone who leased most of the stuff that he had. He also leased all of the land, um, so it, it kind of offsets uh, the fact that we have to buy our land, we don't lease any of our land. Um, so we're, we're leasing more machinery than what he used to. He, he owned some machinery, at least most of it. He leased lots of tractors all, all summer, and he only owned two tractors. Um, he employed quite a lot of people, and he also owned uh, I think he owned one combine and he would lease another one I'm not actually sure on that I think one of them was owned and that was an old ancient thing that was absolutely horrible to drive and kept breaking down all the time and then he had a brand new one and I'm pretty sure that was a leased combine it was kind of on a, a permanent lease hire type thing so that um, he, he pay he would pay a set amount for it each year and um, then after so many years, the combine would be replaced with another new one or something. I'm, I'm not quite sure how that worked. But anyway, um, he only owned one and it was an old combine. It wasn't actually very good. So I am thinking that we'll buy a combine on this map. And I have been talking about that. But the main reason that we're buying Field 1, um, the thing that started all this, is that I would like to do some um, saplings. I'd like to do the poplar saplings. So we're going to need to plant them all. Now the planter, I'm definitely going to lease that. Um, and then I don't know if you fertilise them or not. I've got no clue on that, having never done them previously. Um, but the forager that we use, I'm wondering if we should lease that one or not. Because I, don't, I can't actually look at the, the map now, at the, the shop, because um, we're doing a job. So we'll look at that another time. But obviously the forager is hundreds of thousands of dollars and something that's hundreds of thousands of dollars is going to cost an absolute fortune to um, lease it's going to be 30 40,000 or more 
to lease and that's the initial leasing cost and then you've got the hourly running costs i think it may even be more than that you could be looking at 50 or 60 thousand dollars to lease it initially and then you're looking at 20 to 30 thousand per hour to run it um even if we're able to run it for quite a while and uh, we get a, a, a nice yield from the wood chips that we get from the poplar saplings i'm not sure it's going to be worth it so what i'm thinking is that we should be thinking about saving up our money to be able to buy one now there's only one that can actually take a um the wood chip header on it there are uh, you can actually fit the wood the wood chip header onto the others um the game will allow you to connect them but it does state quite clearly on their website i was looking down through the list of bugs on the um the giants forum um and they've got their list of bugs of everything that they're going to fix or what's intended and what's not and it's one of the bugs that has been listed people have reported it that um the the sapling header doesn't correctly fit to the machine um on on the other one so you've got the new holland one that is designed to take it it's a new holland header and um, it doesn't correctly fit to the other two foragers and they state quite clearly on the website that is intended it can go on there if you want it to but the machine is only actually designed the header is only actually designed to go on the new holland uh machine so we're going to stick to what's actually intended and we're, uh, we're going to use the new holland machine for it which is i think the most expensive one so we're going to be looking at an absolute fortune um to either lease it or buy it one or the other but i am thinking that we should buy it because if we buy it we could get um we could just buy the machine and we could lease the headers we could lease the header for the wood chips when we want that one we could also lease then the maize header for um doing another silage harvest or we could do whole crop um do that instead because we haven't done we didn't do whole crop um we did just the maze that we did with the tractor mounted one so we could put the whole crop header on it and we could harvest a couple of fields of uh, wheat or something like that i'm not quite sure yet but then it was sort of justify buying the the forager but anyway that's that's neither here nor there we might have that as tomorrow's topic of discussion my topic of discussion today is do you want me to set up some conveyor belts over on the farm in that barn so that we can just tip loose fertilizer and seed on the floor and then load them into the machines as we need them just by driving underneath the conveyor belts or do you want me to keep it all in pallets and use the tractor to lift it up and down um yeah but that's just you know something to discuss i don't think it's worth me um wasting a week's question on that one so just kind of want to get your opinions on that and then we'll take it from there my actual weekly question this week is field one just bring it up there that one up in the top uh, top left hand corner i should say top left hand corner um we are going to be buying that field soon do you want me to buy it immediately or do you want me to work the field a little bit more and get the maximum um price reduction that we could get on it? because we don't have the maximum reduction yet we could save ourselves easily another thirty thousand dollars if we go and do a bit more work on it um so it's your vote it's your game there will be a card i hope i'd remember um i'm not going to guarantee it because i might forget again i am that ridiculous sometimes i i could forget twice in a row i did forget yesterday but i corrected it fairly quickly i feel i think it was within an hour i'd gotten that one back up as it should have been um but yes it's your vote it's your game head into the comment section tell us why you're voting for what you're voting but don't forget to actually use the card to cast your vote um I'm not actually going to finish this field on camera. I'm going to go on and finish this field myself. I will tell you tomorrow how much I earn from it, if I remember. Um, if I don't remember, then call me out in the comment section. I'll tell you in there. Uh, anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.